Good evening and uh, welcome to Deerfield Board of Health meeting, June 10th, uh, 2019 at 5 p.m. at the offices in Deerfield at 8 Conway Street. Um, and uh, just to be aware, uh, this meeting is being recorded. So welcome everybody. Um, I, I had called this meeting and, um, to kind of zero in on some of the Board of Health um, issues that we've been working on. Typically, just for people at home, typically we have a um, Board of Health slash Select Board meeting every day, and 90% and of it just with what we have going on is selectmen related. And I just wanted to kind of put a little more laser focus on, on the issues that we're dealing with with the Board of Health right now. and try and give that its, you know, its own day to kind of just work on these issues and try to move them along. So, um, and I kind of viewed this meeting as more of an informal, um, as it's our first one, just we have a few items on the agenda, um, tobacco regulations, tattoo regulations, and um, some ticket book stuff. But just to kind of have a discussion of a, more of an informal working group, you know, meeting of just where we're at, where we want to go with this stuff. And we have so much going on that I just thought it'd be good to kind of dig in and get an update from our health agent what's going on and where we uh, where we need to go so with that a first item is tobacco regulations we do have a set of regulations um, draft I think draft and this was mm -hmm. given to us by um, DJ he is our um, state advocate um, it's supported by money from uh, collected from the settlements with the tobacco companies. And he was here a couple months back giving us a presentation on vaping, right? And that was mm -hmm. uh, about the, and the jewels and, the and risk, that kind of stuff. Yeah, because um, what what happens is that you have to promulgate Board of Health regulations. You have a legal authority, which we have the legal authority to um, handle or set regulations for tobacco products. But then you also have a statement of um, local conditions. And we want to update our um, regulations to reflect the change in the current conditions with um, vaping. Mm -hmm. And our concern as a board, both as parents and grandparents, um, that young people are, there's seemingly mixed messages or no messages to young people on the risk and the danger of vaping. Mm -hmm. So. By updating our regulations, we are therefore making, um, a making a statement that we as a community absolutely do not support vaping mm -hmm. and that Good. it is dangerous. Great. Do, um, has, I haven't had enough time, well, to focus zero in on these regulations, but do you have anything to add or what would you? Well, I think the person that could be involved with us here would probably be Brian Ravish. I'd like mm -hmm. to have him. Great. Have, have input. He's our school resource officer. Yep. And I'd like to have him maybe invited to a meeting, our next Board of Health meeting. It's a great idea. Specifically because Brian has some Deerfield statistics on about how many kids mm -hmm. use the vaping stuff that thinks it's perfectly harmless. Oh. And I've had conversations with Brian. He's right on the ball with this, and mm -hmm. he's 100% uh, behind us with this. So I think we should bring him in as an extra not an extra, but as a person to help us mm -hmm. go forward with these regulations and have Brian review them too. Um, yep. Yeah, it's, it, it's it's quite apparently is right the now. flavored vaping specifically is like candies to some kids. Right. So this that sums up pretty much the whole tobacco regulations that we want to revise, mm -hmm. except for uh, I've got some questions going forward about transferring of licenses I think we need to discuss that at the next meeting also mm -hmm. about I just had a recent uh, concern when somebody wanted to buy out a business and transfer the license. Um, I'm not sure if a business closes or not and, and how long it wants to be closed before that license gets canceled. Well, I would think when it would when it closes, it's canceled. Well, and then if somebody else buys the business, they obviously okay. get a different and what, owner. And I'll give you an example. Um, Jerry's place, for example, closed. It's mm -hmm. been closed for more than six months. Correct. But it's intended to reopen as the exact same business it was. Mm -hmm. How long of a period of time do we want to let it go? I think that should be in the licensing regulations. Mm -hmm. Should it be a year? Should it be six months? And then that license gets canceled? Uh, I'm not quite sure. We did well, transfer. It's not the same owner opening it back up. That's that correct. 
That's correct. When somebody goes to sell their business and they, mm -hmm. determine, they decide to close it, okay, mm -hmm. can they just keep paying the tobacco license mm -hmm. and keep it for two years? No. I don't think that's defined well enough. Hmm. Okay. That's uh, we'll one have of the... to see what the regulations, state regulations that's are. That's one on of that. the... Yeah. Yeah. They don't allow that with liquor licenses anymore. Oh, they no. used to? Yeah. Okay. Used to be that you own the liquor license and you can keep it and actually sell the liquor license. Oh. You can't yeah. do that anymore because it's under yeah. the town authority huh. now. It's a licensing. Yeah. It's a licensing authority. So I'd like to see you put a deadline on how long that store could be closed before, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers, the Sunoco gas station, Old Deerfield was closed for mm -hmm. a year maybe? Yes. At least, yeah. Do you want to reissue a license or do you want to cut them down? I think the goal was to not sell any tobacco in the town of Deerfield, period, at one point. Hmm. I don't know what the thoughts are today. So that needs some consideration we should be talking about in not this meeting, but the next meeting. Well, I think start we had, to talk we about had put it. a cap on the licenses in the town of yeah. Deerfield so that yeah. there was some discussion yeah. as to how, you know, we just don't want cigarettes on every corner. But we, I don't think it was saying that we would eliminate them right. necessarily, well, but it was t definitely not to make them more pro uh, prolific. Okay. And I'll give you another example that we, we need to probably talk to. I, I think we should be talking to Waitley because the Irving gas stations, two of them, one in Waitley, one in South Deerfield. Yeah. I think we should try to coordinate with Waitley to see if we could get on the same wavelength with them, if they would follow suit with us to do that because if we on the vaping you mean yeah because mm -hmm. if we do it and the Irving station in Deerfield gets it it'll simply drive the kids over to the other the other station if they have to yep no that's okay. a yeah um, I think there's there's a lot of interest um, to do this yeah so I think the state's getting ready to do it anyway at, at some point we should be looking at that kind of, I won't call it a regionalization of tobacco but yeah it, but just a coordination basically is yeah. Just to see where they're at and, and, yeah. uh, and coordinating our Board of Health. So I yeah, think it's correct. always good to have that, a regional that, meeting. That, that's, that's, where I'm, that's what I was leading up. Yeah. To. Thank you. Yep. That's it. You know, there's the misconception that vaping is not dangerous. Mm. That's huge. why I want it's Brian huge. Ravish to weigh in. Um, you uh, know, you're still talking nicotine. Yeah. Well, um, you, Dave, the pod is, is a, 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 a whole pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. One pod yeah. yep. is the nicotine of all those so, cigarettes. You know, it's you know, unbelievable. Unfortunately, I have a very tragic family history with this stuff oh, from smoking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my oldest brother was sent home from school in the second grade for smoking. He yeah. died when he was oh, 39. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cancer. Yeah. My twin brother was sent home in the seventh grade for smoking. Yeah. You know, he lived to the ripe old age of 53. Wow. I don't know. My mother was buried when she was 42 on my 12th birthday, well, all from smoking. Wow. See, I don't know if somebody wanted to get a high from the thing if they could crack the tube open and swallow the, the liquid. I don't know. I, you know, I hear from the kids at school, the running joke is who put, <laughs> who put toilets in the vaping room? You know, I mean, we've got, we've got an issue. There's, there's, um, there is a problem. And, and I don't know, you know, the kids need to be addressed, so, you know, aware of it. And I'm sure the schools are, are more than willing to, and looking for the help. And I'm sure they get right behind us, you know, limiting so access to these. If it's okay with the board, I'd like to contact Brian and, and yes. go over this with him and start discussing that with him. Mm -hmm. So you could possibly invite him to the next meeting to, for some input. He, yeah. he may have some real good suggestions because he's could you make sure these every day. Could you make sure he looks at this so, because if we have I'm another meeting. I'm going to give him a copy of it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, because I would like yeah. us to adopt this regulation. Well, the I mean. other thing was, yeah, that was my question, is that a few months back we were really kind of anxious to get going and adopt these regulations, but we were also looking at Somerville, right? And, um, and you know, province. kind of some of, the, some of the court cases that are going in. Were, Somerville, were eliminated all, Somerville eliminated menthol all um, uh, flavors, including mint and menthol and mint. Um, the Rhode Island one is um, allowed mint and methyl, menthol, and therefore it was not, it was challenged, but they lost, the, you know, they won the challenge. Right. But Somerville's was still in court. Did you hear from DJ yet? Okay. I, I think we could do as a temp, we could do the Rhode Island mm -hmm. um, 
where we eliminate all uh, flavors except mint and menthol because we already know it holds up in court. Right. And then once we've hit, we've waited now on the Somerville for a while. So if Somerville prevails, then we could we have revision. another, we could have another public hearing and just eliminate mint and menthol. I know it's an extra step, but it's better than having no regulations. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we've kind of been, I wanted to do this before good weather came. I know. I know. Um, yeah, and you know, just one last item with this vaping scenario. I don't know if this would cover the paraphernalia. I know it doesn't. It covers the cartridges mm. for the smoking, but I don't know if it covers the paraphernalia to use that as in the actual electronic device. I don't know if that's covered well enough. Yeah, to, they just so look like can't. a USB drive. I mean, that's all yeah. it is. It's really yeah. hard to kind of Well, it says separate. any electronic device. Yeah, so okay. I think it does. So I you're mean, okay with that. But I, what I'm yeah. not okay with is can they sell the electronic device anywhere? Or is that, is that, would that be considered part of the tobacco or not? The electronic device? You're yeah. saying, yeah, saying the separate, food. this electronic device separate from the pod. So you're telling me if somebody was to go to their store, the Elder Lumber, was to start selling the electronic device for cigarettes, I could tell them to cease and desist selling them. I think that's what the regulations okay. say, right? I mean, yeah. I, um, I'm not sure if that one will hold up in court, unfortunately. Okay. Because it's you like see where I'm going prohibiting somebody from selling a pipe. Yeah, you, you're seeing yeah. where I'm going with that. Yeah. The um, kids can just go into there and buy that, and then somebody and else goes out and buys two dozen cartridges for them, and yeah. they pass them around you know, Obviously, in Deerfield, you have to be at least 21 to buy any okay. of that. But um, okay. it's, um, I think we're on a little bit of shaky ground for the device itself. Okay. And I'll pass on that. And, you know, it's... Uh, other than that, I think we'll be ready for the next meeting to vote on this and have changes made and vote on it. If you're, you know, I get in touch with Brian, have him show up, and I think you'd be ready. Okay. And I don't think you're ready tonight to sign it. No. We well, no, no because we, you, have to, you have to let people have a... Well, you got to hold a hearing. Hold a yeah, hearing. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. You can, and then council can, would probably want to get together with Brian. I can tell you individually... We Brian should send just changes so your thoughts or get a copies to you. And then by the time you have the next meeting or you can hold set a hearing date, whatever. Right. Unless you want to set a hearing date for the next meeting. Um, has, well, I'd probably want Lisa. Had, Diana, had, do you know if Lisa's looked at any of this stuff yet? Uh, or we would probably want to put it together in, in a draft form and then send that. Regulation to you? Yeah. Sure. And then send that to her to. Have her well, then we could send. Then, we could do have her just run through the tattoo regulations because we are literally just adopting um, Northampton's tattoo regulations, um, including the new update with microblading. Um, just um, we're, we're downgrading it from a three-year um, apprenticeship requirement to a one-year apprenticeship requirement, which is Boston's requirement. Um, they, it's, it was too stringent. Micro dotting is along the eyeliner, mm -hmm. but micro blading is like your eyebrow stuff. And that they felt after they had the three year requirement for micro blading that it was too stringent. Right. They want to keep obviously the micro dotting because that's over someone's eye, but the micro blading would be one, one year. year. And so what they're doing. Um, or have done is they've um, the only thing they've changed in all their regulations for the last few years that they've had regulations on the books is that they are um, adopting the Boston regulation for microblading. So, okay. and that that's it. They've had really good success. They're one of the best regulations in the state, and the reason why is because Meredith got all the tattoo artists together right and they and developed a really good standard on yeah, everything so it's one of the best in the whole state that's so, good and then the, and they've had good experience they've had yeah. no no issues none it's except important. for the microblading was the the three-year requirement for apprenticeship was a little tough okay i mean it was not necessary necess what they felt like right but that's the only change mm. so so if um, you want to get the both the e-cigarette and the, the tattoo things, get get it to Lisa Mead for review. Yes, mm -hmm. we will. And then the next meeting, you could set the hearing date 
mm -hmm. we, we should be all set. Okay. I can, I'll, I'll do the follow up with the smoking thing and Northampton thing, all we're gonna do is change the name on the, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and have it, a look at that. Okay. Do we have zoning restrictions on tattoo parlors? No. It's, it's in our commercial? No, it's in our commercial zone. District. Any place in the commercial district you can have yeah. a, a tattoo any, any, You can have it anywhere in downtown. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's uh, more state regulated than town regulated. Yeah, but we have our, the, having our own regulations uh, up to the standards of Northampton is No, really Northampton's been doing a good job on that. I've been following them. They're doing a good job on it, so they've done all our homework for us. Okay. Yep. I feel really comfortable what about What Carol was saying about the, the, the eyelids versus the eyebrows is a, is a major, major issue. Yep. I, and I see Meredith, she's one of the mosquito commissioners, so I talk to her on a regular basis. And um, she's one of the coalition members too. So I, I see her multiple, multiple times a month, so. I'm uh, assuming yeah. you're gonna have another meeting next month. Yeah, we're, I, I'm sorry, I, think I, we're forgot gonna, to, I forgot to mention that. I keep, yeah, I think I keep we're gonna saying try your to next do meeting. This once a month, right? Yeah, I, I would love to do that. Just okay. the one yeah, that's dedicated, fine. you yeah. know, that way you could okay. weigh in on stuff yeah, that you're we have working a on. Weeks and we can have get other people to come in if we need them. One on I can one invite time. other people to the meeting if necessary for yep. different, different things. Um, okay. Okay. So, Dick, you were going to talk about um, the ticket books? You didn't oh, know I, the tickets? I already talked to John Pachurik. He okay. has uh, ticket books for the police department. He offered to print ticket books for me, just give him a copy of what I want done, make the, make the changes. Uh, Do you um, need any help with that? Do you need... Uh, I just need the ticket book back that I got. Diana has it. I can get it back for her, and I'll just put the Mass General Law regulations on it and get it done. Okay. That'd be great. That's not, uh, I didn't realize that John had access to that so easily. Yeah, that's perfect. He offered, to, he offered to take care of it for me. So That's fantastic. I'm not going to turn him down. In yeah. no. cooperation is the best way to go. Yeah. That's good. Um, I, I just had a couple updates. Um, the Mosquito, um, I, I was on a conference call with DPH today um, at the Mosquito meeting, and they're um, going to do trapping starting next week. They actually did preliminary surveillance and um, the lava load was much lower because we've had so much rain. They were worried mm -hmm. about so much rain so it was gonna be an awful mosquito uh, meeting uh, year. But they've had so much mosquito activity um, in the water and the water ca has kept coming that actually the it's snow awesome. melt mosquitoes are just, are, are it's their first blood meal, so there's no real infection of the mosquitoes that are happening, but they're ravenous, and they're, so they're biting terrible, but there's no infection rate anywhere, and mm. the lava load has been low. But because of the heat, they're anticipating this next week. Be an explosion. Um, it's sure. gonna be an explosion. It's gonna be the first infectious kind of moderate um, stuff. Um, so it's very interesting. Like I said, they had initially predicted they were going to start up, but then their initial trappings were way low on lava, so they backed off, and they're just starting next week. Um, they'll be doing two gravid um, um, traps here in town, which is your West Nile disease. They're going to do two light traps, which is your triple E. They are anticipating less um, West Nile disease this year, but potentially much greater um, triple E. Mm -hmm. um, there are tons of mela, mela nova um, mosquitoes which carry the triple E. Um, there's been steady to moderate rainfall right along, so they're doing the site assessments and they're gonna keep out uh, their eye out for the triple E, which is of course the one that we're really scared of. Um, also in the conversation this week, um, we're just uh, and I had brought this up to Dick earlier in the, um, is that um, CBD, which is your hemp, Massachusetts mm -hmm. legally now can grow hemp, but it, your, if, if the crop goes above 3%, 0.03%, they have to throw them out because then it becomes marijuana. Right. So They're just looking and, for and the it, strings. As Dick says, the easiest thing to think about is you're just 
it's all female. You get one male in there, and then it yeah. just spread like wildfire, and the and the crop is destroyed. Yeah. What what so. happens is, if the, the plants aren't segregated, it's four thousand plants per acre to grow hemp approximately. Mm -hmm. If the plants aren't segregated, and you get a an acre, and you have to go through that acre every single day to make sure that a male plant doesn't pollinate it. If right. it does, those levels come up to the marijuana right. levels and makes it destroy the whole crop. Right. So this- It's kind of tricky growing. This is just kind of tricky, it. and no, we need to think down the road of a little monitoring, because back in the olden days in Second World War, and they didn't have marijuana, they smoked hemp rope. Right. Smoking rope was a common thing, okay? So we need to kind of maybe have a start to look down the road at regulating the hemp a little bit in town. I've had at least a half a dozen phone calls for people who want to build greenhouses in Deerfield. I had one today and one yeah. last week on Thursday or Friday. Want to build greenhouses to specifically grow hemp. Good. And I doubt very seriously if a couple of the people I've talked to had any idea what was involved. So, well, so really the issue, we're not, yes, there is issue with growing, and that's legal in Massachusetts, yeah. and that Dick is dealing with that, but what I was concerned about was the pro, there's confusion. It's very confusing because products are coming out of um, Washington and Colorado that are U.S., made in the U.S., that kind of stuff that has CBD, CBD. in it. And it's a finished massage product. Massage oils. There's all uh, kinds yeah. of stuff. All that stuff is yeah. illegal in yeah. town, and it's yeah. sneaking into each town. And like uh, uh, um, Jean Galloway from West Deer, uh, West uh, Springfield and um, Meredith in Northampton today are having wicked troubles monitoring all kinds of retail okay. outlets. Here's because there's no license for that Well, stuff. here's a little fact. The fact is... Hemp is an agricultural product that we right. cannot we regulate. Not. We can only regulate the end use of the product, Correct. not the growing of the product. So you can't even make a hemp grower be licensed in the town mm -hmm. because that prohibited by the agricultural but regulations. Any, any, once it leaves the field and is being processed at all, it, it's not legal. None of the CBD oil is legal None of the products that you eat, so, anything, anything that's been processed. Unless it comes out of a so we need Because to there's no license in Massachusetts for yet. It's for coming. Not for hemp, but for, uh, for oils and stuff, there are out of the... None of this CBD oil is not allowed in Massachusetts right now because there's no license. That is all illegal stuff. And we, on the local level... What do you level, mean, coming out of the, the, the uh, like, Northampton, the, Pittsfield, yes. Dalton? If you go, if you go and you get something yeah, you out of... you can still get... You can know. That's not accurate, right? At the dispensary? Yeah, dispensary, you can get... Yes, you can. Yes, there's no license for CBD oils They've all in Massachusetts. Nothing. That's the, where the confusion, uh, confusion is Because CBD, coming. if it doesn't have a traceable amount of THC... Yeah. Right. That is correct. Legal. It's totally legal. You're, you're correct. No, no, no. no. I, I think, you I think, guys, no, this is, I just she's, came she's out confused. of a meeting. I just okay. came out of a meeting. We are, <laughs> okay. you look it up for us. There is no Massachusetts license. Let's, let's put it this way. We need to do some more research for the next yeah. meeting. I, yeah. How's okay, that? I'm just we telling you. We need to do more research to clarify. We have a problem if it's popping up in Deerfield. It's popping up in Northampton. It's popping up so in West Deerfield. what is the problem? The problem is it's being sold illegally. But what? What is what is the unintended consequences of something that doesn't because have THC not, in it? Because the the CBD there is no license and and so none of those things are are um, allowed in Massachusetts at the moment legally. I, look, I, I don't know if I agree with that because yeah, I I, I don't think that's accurate. It could be something else that's not legal because I mean. There Florida is, marijuana is not okay, legal, but you can, no get a, you can get a CBD oil there's no, massage. There's no way to show that that's less than 3% the CB, CBD oil there, in Massachusetts. They test them. They no, test them at there the, is no license in Massachusetts for those You're talking about things. hemp, not I marijuana. Know, I know, but there's, but there's no, CBD nothing. CBD oils that come out of marijuana no that are legal. There's no license in Massachusetts that that's been issued. 
hemp oil, not, not marijuana hemp. oil. That is not correct. Not cannabis. She's talking about no, CBD. No, I'm talking about hemp. CBD. Out of hemp. Yes. Not out of cannabis. Though. No, that's right. I'm talking about what this. Hemp. This is a Which loophole. is the same plant. <laughs> Well, have no, because they have it approved. They've only if it's a higher percentage, yeah. it's legal. And so only it's legal if it's higher percentage, but if it's not a higher percentage, they, it is illegal. Yeah. Which it's seems illegal. Saying that little that gray area is not licensed <laughs> because the state hasn't come out with any licensing for it, and then and it's stuck at, on but the local But if it's high, you can have it. But if it's there's a little not much in it, you're not allowed to have it. There is no license right now. To this be is sold. pretty simple. Research. We can't regulate. We need to research this, yes. and we can't regulate where that right. grower sells his stuff. I'm, I'm just telling you. So, what but do we need to investigate it? Yes. As the board of health. Okay. Well, I know there's an issue I'm with, with you. CBDs I'm with you. nationwide. I that is spent correct. Because there's no regulation on the processing of it. That is correct. You can so get a massage anywhere. With they're that selling stuff. that stuff. Mm -hmm. all but uh, over it's the place, being sold and some of it might not even be CBD. Right. <laughs> Right. There's been no Massachusetts license and testing okay. approved. Mm -hmm. That's an assignment to research that. Yeah, that's fine. I'm no. just saying it's popping up, <laughs> and it's a problem for boards of health. How do we get back we, on that? Well, I, she went I've to a meeting. She went to a meeting today. today. <laughs> <on board of laughs> went to a meeting okay. today. <laughs> I'm, I'm Thank up you. to date. So Thank that's you. it. Those were All the right. two issues that came up today. Uh, I, I think, and I hate to put poor Brian on the spot, but Brian has a load of information on a lot of this stuff. All right. And I really want to drag him into this and put him on the spot. John Petrus probably not going to appreciate it. <laughs> but, but, we'll he, figure it out. but he's a good resource so, for this knowledge. Yeah. So, so, but what it is is these loopholes happen, and then their board of health are stuck mm -hmm. trying to enforce this stuff, and that's what yeah. they're saying is that the state needs to catch up with this because a lot of these products are not stamped U.S. U made in the U.S.A. or mm -hmm. there's no standard, and so China has flooded the market with a lot of this stuff that is who knows what it is blow quality plus there's a huge amount of pesticides and herbicides involved and yep. um, people are really worried that it's at least a better shot but there's still no testing or quality control or anything over all this oil because it's not nothing no licenses have been granted and no testing is being done in Massachusetts so if you're buying it here you know if it's not made in USA it's a it's, problem I know I it's got to be a miscommunication. The program the two oversees items. regulation. It says they license it. Oversight and regulation of legally grown hemp for commercial purposes. It says certification, We're talking about certification of industrial hemp through regulatory testing to ensure THC levels of 0.3%, 0.03%. You can grow it, but you can't process it and sell it in Massachusetts yet. There's no license been granted. If it, if it goes up to seven, if it goes up to seven percent, then, it, then 7, it can go. It goes under the cannabis commission and, and, it, and it's licensed. Way. But if it's less than three percent, which is the CBD designation, yeah. there is no license that has been provided by the state of Massachusetts to sell anything, hmm. and there's no testing of it. So there is no um, appropriate. So you would you would. I'm just thinking why you would bother to test it, but you'd be bothering to test it because you wouldn't want other things in that. Right. You, so it's you're okay up to if the it's state. 7%, it's underneath that that you, yeah. you don't and know the, what's and the in state, it. And the state isn't regulating it, hasn't given any don't license. Why the state wouldn't just say anything's got to be 7% and above. Make it easy. They're, they're well, allowing they you to grow it. it. But there is no license for oh. processing or selling of retail items. Oh. And that's where we, as a local board of health, are, have oversight is the selling of retail items. Mm -hmm. And there is no licensing in Massachusetts that allows, uh, allows this to be sold because there's no oversight. Testing. There's no testing, no nothing. So who knows? It could be from China and it could be loaded with all kinds of poisons. And you know you don't know what you're rubbing you in during your massage you don't know what you're getting and so that's what is we as the board of health are supposed to be aware of that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. everyone's protesting it saying get up and get going on it massachusetts but i wonder why they're why the ccc is just i don't know but they're they're, they're have just thrown it on the local level and if we can't have any well, enforcement powers on this other than to make people withdraw it from their 
you know, retail right. outlets. So if it's hmm. popping up in Deerfield, Dick is supposed to let us know and we make a well, decision whether start it's beaten feet out I there. Know. I mean, they're pulling it. They're find. pulling it off the shelves in other towns. Is this because yeah. of that? Okay. So, all right. I don't know. Well, we'll do a little well, more research on this. you can't stop anybody who wants to grow hemp. You can't stop them. Period. No, no, no. I w that's, we that's, aren't talking about that. We're talking yeah. about the retail. Yeah, you can't stop them from grow. That that's a that's a dead issue right mm -hmm. at this moment in life. Okay? Because it's agricultural. Yeah. I mean, it was in the, but what happened is where the confusion, where all this confusion has happened is that actually the farmers um, lobbied and got it in the farm bill. So all of a oh. sudden everybody said it's legal because it's in the farm bill and the farm bill now supports farmers that do hemp. Right. But that's the growing process, not, not, the, the, not the, the retail, of it. not the retail part yeah. of it. And you have no idea whether you're getting trace or up to 3% or seven or eight percent i mean no Who one knows, knows. especially your edibles because you think of a batch of brownies oh yeah mm -hmm. you mix in the marijuana well somebody could have gotten a big chunk of it in one piece and nothing hardly in another piece there's no regulation on that kind of stuff and that's what the state well is there is there is on when yes, it's through the cannabis not. and through the medical but i'm saying there's nobody looking at the cbd stuff mm -hmm. on that so you're you, because you're getting the low end they're saying, oh, it's safe, but you don't even know if you're getting anything. It could be completely hokey. Here's a, here's a brownie. It's got right. CBD it is, oil in it, and, and, and then it, it has nothing. Right. There's no testing, no regulation, no mm. licensing of anybody that's done anything. Gotcha. So that's why we have to be concerned if it shows up as food product or, um, you know, oil or right. however. If We're supposed if to be aware good. of it. And, that, and yeah. it seems like the general consensus is there, if it's not packaged like a Washington State or a Colorado certified, mm -hmm. because it's not USD, and it wouldn't be USDA right. or they're FDA. Not they're not going right. to do that. So not yet. It, it not yet. So if it's if it's from it's up to the local boards of health. If it's packaged from another state, do you want to keep it on or not? But the decision that to, if it's Chinese, they've been pulling it because of the, they, they don't know if it's been. Tested. Okay. There's a lot of issues. I mean, I'm not going to say in public. Yeah. No, no, it's good. Don't good buy enough. Chinese stuff. Right. But of course it's, not. It's questionable. Yep. What you're getting. Yeah. Basically. It's too expensive. There's a big tariff on it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's one of the things that's been tariffed, truthfully. You never know. <laughs> you never know. So, um, any other um, items we want to? I mean, I know this is a pretty loose agenda here. We we're just kind of uh, initial meeting, but uh, um, so meeting every month is good. That's we can do that. Me. Yep. Absolutely um, fine. I don't have, that's uh, did probably you, a good thing. Um, did you want to reorganize the board? I have been chair for years and years. I mean, I'll volunteer to keep doing it. Oh, but gosh, no, I didn't even think of that. I yeah. just assumed that the, they were the same. Um, well, they used to be, but um, I, I got no, to be chair no. about 10 years ago, and no one else You're wanted welcome. it. You're welcome to keep it. I <laughs> you took the most with it. <laughs> That's fine. I just didn't know if you wanted to or reorganize it because no, um, it's not that it's a big deal, but no, I'm fine with that. I, I represent us in meetings as chair of Board of Health, so yeah. good. That's um, fine. I'm okay, still good with that. Um, Is there any update on Stillwater that um, you can discuss? Um, a second letter went out, which you have copies of. Okay, I do not. Eighty-one Stillwater. Second okay. letter. Second letter's gone out. Yeah, I, have any, I don't have any it. copies of that yet. Uh, you don't. Mm -mm. Uh, Priscilla sent them out to you last Thursday. Nope. I will see that that's taken care of tomorrow. Okay. I absolutely sure she sent you copies. Unless I missed it. I mean, I'm. Uh, Did you get I your don't... mail since last Friday? From. From your mail mail. My, in, in my mailboxes mailbox? in the nope, office. Nothing in there. Okay. It, so I'll be looking for a letter letter, not an email. A letter letter. No, I have not yeah. gotten one yet. A letter letter. Can you just stick it in our box? I'll make sure that's taken care of tomorrow. Um, we can't discuss that any further at this Fine. point. Fine. Uh, yeah. And one thing I wanted to mention, I, an update from, I got from directly from the doctor's office, and I hate to open up this subject, but Carolyn said in the air, <laughs> ticks. Oh, good. It's yeah. to be assumed that all ticks 
have Lyme disease. Or Not something else. Not just the ticks that have been designated in the past. It's uh, they all have Lyme disease, and that people need to be conscious of that. Absolutely. It's the devastating. Second, the second thing I want to mention is we have an animal control officer and people who have bats, mm -hmm. woodchucks, skunks, squirrels, we take those and relocate them for people when they're nuisance at people's houses and get the bats tested. We have an animal control officer yep. that takes care of that. Very responsive. He, they, anybody can call in the Board of Health office yep. or they can call the police department yep. and the police department will call, call him in and we'll get that done because we've had some recent bad issues that have been taken care of. Yep. And I know that he's involved in Greenfield and Montague. Yep. He's also been very busy with similar items over there. So oh, okay. I had a call today, the woman got a bat, she didn't know what to do with it and she let it go. Yeah. Which that's not the right thing to do. Right. I mean we have Especially if you wake up and there's one in your room. You Yeah, that's exactly the whole you point. You don't know if you've been bit if or you scratched. Just flew around, if it's it one thing for overnight. an adult, but if it's a if if it was in your bedroom overnight, overnight with a child or an elder or get anybody, it tested. You should have it tested because yeah. you might yeah. not yeah. even be aware that you've been bitten. Yeah, we haven't had any rabid bats as in the past few years, but we have had other animals like skunks and woodchucks that have been rabid, but those were disposed of properly and uh, those get taken care of. So I just want to make sure anybody listening in. Is just following some protocol here yep. to, for their own we benefit. We have those resources, yeah. and, and, winning. and it goes in cycles. And yeah. we we are on a down cycle at the moment, but just a couple of years ago we were on an up up cycle of it. So we we it's very important to pay attention because it does it rotates out. It seems like it's a five year, five to seven year cycle. Yeah. And so even if it's on the down cycle downside at the moment. It doesn't mean it can't it's kick back It's pretty active right now, believe it or not. No, it's I know it is, active. but it's yeah. still on, it's not as active as it was and two years ago. for people that don't know, mm -hmm. consult their doctor, absolutely. Yeah. Don't touch any dead skunks, don't touch any dead oh, animals. It's call so animal trans. control yeah. or pick it up with a shovel and black bag it and call them up and he'll dispose of it. It's very, very serious, and actually. There's also, um, is there still funding left for? At we UMass? still have, we still Just have a few, few ticked tests. tests. We haven't run out of money, but um, what uh, we're getting towards the end of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So what um, UMass is willing to do is just bill us at a next year's money. Oh, good. If if people have ticks, if they run too many tick tests, because we're getting towards the end. Right. But like Dick said, um, what's very concerning is um, the. For sure, we're a solid third has Lyme disease, but it's really not it's just Lyme disease. It's all these secondary bacteria um, mm -hmm. um, infections, and they are, are creeping up. They're getting closer to the seven and eight percent of the ticks, and each one is seven or eight percent possibility. So, there is a good chance that that tick is infected with something if you if you are bitten with a tick, and um, the secondary bac bacterial infections are more serious but also they can be transmitted within a short period of time, like 15 minutes. Before, there's been this, you know, 24 hours, if it really bitten you, mm -hmm. all that kind of, maybe it hasn't transferred. This is not the case mm -hmm. in the secondary bacterial infections. It's immediate, almost. And, the, and once the tick really bites you and there's been some transfer, it really, you're talking four to six hours. So if you've missed a tick and you've gone overnight, then that tick has transferred the Lyme disease, if it's Lyme disease. It's very serious, uh, actually, and it, it's such a peace of mind to send it down to UMass, and it's $15. They give us a deal. We, we as a town pay $15, but then we get the data to know what's going on in our town, and then you get a peace of mind, mm -hmm. and um, it it's, it's just doesn't make sense. But you need to tr train your kids to look for tick tests. The most vulnerable population is your eight to 10 to 12 year olds that are too independent to have be have mom or dad check their ticks, mm -hmm. but they're not seriously um, doing tick checks well. So wow. those are the kids that are most at risk, seemingly have the highest infection rate in the county. And that's statewide too, it's just not here in the county, but that's what the medical data shows. The other issue, you know, I mentioned this a uh, couple weeks back that I had a friend um, 
big, strong guy that was taken out by a tick. I mean, literally, he didn't. He waited too long. He thought, oh, I can, you know, I can get through this. Just a cold or something, and it, it <clears throat> took him out to the hospital for days, and you know, just devastating for him. So please, if you're feeling anything, if you see a tick, just get checked out as soon yeah. as you can. Really. Well, is. the other thing is that any testing we send out to do for bats, skunks, ticks, and anything. Our animal control guy or myself will absolutely call back that person with the results immediately upon receiving that. Mm -hmm. We get a fax for it, and we will make the phone call saying it's got this or it's got that. Yeah. In most cases, we even call to say it has nothing. Right. Okay. So That's not a recipes. critical call. We make it when we can, but if there is any infection of any kind, we will call within an hour of receiving that back from the laboratory. And if you're so. doing the tick check, you, you get an email back right away from UMass. Yes. Really, usually yeah. within more, yeah. not much sure. more than 24 hours so after the they follow receive up, it. The follow it's, up is really good. We will follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so, and Lisa um, gets the information, so she's calculating it as well. So it, it's hmm? really important. Um, anything else, I guess, you know, do you, you typically have a inspection schedule, I assume, for, you know, I, don't, I never really talked to you much about that, but I just wanted to, yeah, you know, restaurants, I didn't know um, liquor licenses are coming up, all the licenses and stuff come up every year. Yeah. I assume you we have, have a schedule uh, and you do that. We have about 40 average food licenses. We have 20, 30 a year, private ones, maybe 40. Yep. The restaurants get inspected on a regular basis about twice a year randomly. Yep. The schools get inspected absolutely twice a year. Yep. Um, I'll give you an example. Tomorrow morning, I, I just definitely, I have a permit at 11 o'clock. I have a Title V at 9 o'clock, and I have another meeting in Old Deerfield at 11 o'clock tomorrow. So, yep. um, okay. average phone call day today was 26 phone calls in. 26 calls out, yeah. okay, um, probably about 20 emails, uh, pretty pretty busy. Granted, some of those are Board of Health, some of those are Building Inspector. Mm -hmm. Once you put a Building Inspector in place here, it'll Their goal. ramp up. So we will be doing more. We will be doing, I used to do trainings that I held here with restaurants. Mm -hmm. Great. You remember that, Carolyn? I used yep. to bring in all the restaurants and have a speaker come in and train them for choke saver, for example, yep. food safety things, for example. And we will be doing that. I had uh, a couple of times I've had septic installers in here for Good. septic systems on the latest changes in the septic scenario laws. What's working and what's not. <laughs> what's working, what's not working. Yeah. Um, and we I'd do. I'd like to see more of that. That'd be great. That'd so really we will be going that. back to that as soon as I get relieved of this yeah. uh, building inspector thing. I will be going back to holding those kind of meetings and stuff. And probably it might not even be a bad idea to, to hold some of those when you have the Board of Health meeting. Right. Or to have no, somebody come that. in for that. a Board of Health meeting. I hate to tie you up for a couple hours more. No, but, I, we learn that but, way. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to we, do that. Um, you know, there's been so many. Mid little mini grants for um, ICS training and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yeah. we've done all this kind of, we've, we usually try to do training. It's just that Dick hasn't been available this past yeah. year. No. Well, so it'll really the, be a um, year this that'd be July. Great. There's credit hours that are required for some uh, inspectors, inspections of septic system. There's and credit by, hours and that are required. And by us sponsoring them, it's, it's yeah. nice because then we get to attend. Yeah. yeah. But also all our people, either the restaurant people or the yeah. installers or yeah. whatever. So. It helps us have a relationship with everybody. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a so, great idea. And great. an interesting thing that I do is I, I eat it. I frequent a lot of the restaurants in town, and I walk through the kitchens on every, Good. almost every time. Yep. <laughs> so it's only for the public's health, so it's, it's great. I'm you glad got it. You're doing that. You got it. It's. Uh, I have to say that the majority of our restaurants are pretty clean. Good. I think we have somebody sitting at the board that thought one was dirty, and I took her to that when she was extremely surprised at that restaurant. Yes. You do not mention it. No. Uh, she not. was extremely surprised that it was extremely clean in the kitchen. Good. 
It was 100 percent improvement from the 80s. Yeah, great. So I've had people come in for, uh, no, you can't get away with that, or you can't get away with this anymore. You, you have to do it nice, nicely. Yeah. Uh, there are some people that won't listen, but there yeah. are most of them. I would say we have a pretty decent crew. Um, randomly, there may be something that they miss or something happens. I don't get any complaints out of people for correcting it because we're fair with them. Mm -hmm. And I plan on being content. Same with septic systems, we're fair. I'm not out to see anybody spend $50,000 on a monument to the pyramids or whatever. Right. Uh, right. We're trying to keep these things under control. Um, so our next meeting would be um, July 8th. Yep. Does anyone have a problem with that? Um, do you know? Do you guys have a schedule? Uh, you schedule the meeting and I'll be there. Well, we, we pick, just picked it randomly the second Monday of the month. Yeah. So and that if, really works for me. Okay. It, I mean, it's up to you guys. Same time. You can have yeah. it any time you want. I think 5 o'clock works because yeah, Dave, then you don't have to worry about your schedule, right? You can just go to work. What time do you yeah. go to work, Dave? Uh, 4 on 6. So this yeah. is perfect because you we should be wet, wrapping up. Okay. That Actually, I'm good. off the night of okay, the good. Eight, so. oh, okay, good. Oh, great. Okay. I don't, I don't want to burden you with a whole bunch of stuff, but I, I've got tons of stuff we can talk about at other meetings and upgrading and updating you. And I, I don't want to use the word training, but we'll, we'll learn. No, but it's really great. Well, and, that's um, we'll, keep we'll looking after. I'll use the word informed. Well, that's what we're looking to do is keep to, to kind of keep to make this, you know, a, a meeting of its own so we can truly address these issues. If people have them and want to bring them up, um, yeah. let's let's deal with it. Yeah. Um, the only other thing that I can think of that we probably just to check with you is um, appointing um, backups for um, oh. uh, Board of Health. I was going to appoint Gina. Gina McNeely. McNeely. But not as the Montague Health Director, just Gina McNeely. Gina McNeely is done in Montague on the right. 30th of June. So she's volunteered to come and help us if I need help or backup. Gina is very, very well versed in Board of Health stuff, and she septic has all systems she and everything. She's a nice person. And Valerie Bird, who's now the Greenfield Director, absolutely will help Valerie us. Valerie has been our, uh, yeah. both Gina and Valerie yeah. have been our um, backups. And Gina hasn't but been, but Valerie. Gina has, been. has retired. So she's not um, with Montague anymore, but she has all her certifications still. And then um, Valerie has gone from um, the Foothills to Greenfield Health Director. So mm -hmm. we just would appoint Valerie still, but it yeah. would be as the Greenfield Health Director. Is mm -hmm. they're, all, they're, they're both a good resource for, yep. they're, they're a resource also when some, something comes up that never And we're actually came back up, up for them. I mean, Dick is yeah. listed in Shelburne yeah. as well, right? Yeah. We, it, I'm not listening. To sometimes, them, sometimes something will come up. Um, example today was they're putting an oxygen tank in at the animal center for oxygen, and the tank had to be a certain distance from the building. Well, it's not that distance, but now it needs a fence between it, and um, what the type of fence was and stuff. So I had to coordinate that with the fire department and the fire marshal today. It's got nothing to do with Board of Health, but that's kind of an example of some of the things you have to coordinate with. Yeah. To make sure they get done right. Good. You know, grease traps in a, in a restaurant. Uh, I'm working on that with Kevin to try to track down where the grease is going down the sewer line. Mm -hmm. We will find it. Yeah. Um, I don't believe it's a slug from any restaurant dumping anything down. I believe it's somebody dumping something someplace. We'll find, we'll find it. We'll find it. Yep. So. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. I'll Thank start, you very I'll much. Start taking care of that stuff. Great. Appreciate it.